If you consider buying a fleet carrier, or maybe you already own one, then this video is most definitely for you. Because today we're gonna go over everything you need to know to probably manage your fleet carrier. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Antwerp Astronomy. So, fleet carriers. Let's dive right into it and let's start with what will be the first step for any would-be fleet carrier owner, and that is to get your hands on a fleet carrier itself. A fleet carrier costs 5 billion credits just for the hull. You'll have to add modules. We'll come back to those in a second. In order to buy a fleet carrier, you need to find a system that has the fleet carrier vendor. If we go over here to the um, to the map and we select services, you can see here we have the option to select fleet carrier vendor and fleet carrier administration. But you need the fleet carrier vendor if you want to buy one. If you want to make changes to your loadout, you need to add to a system with a fleet carrier administration. All the systems with the vendor also has administrations. However, it seems at this time there is a bug with these filters that they're just outright not working. First, the system here right in it, next to Girata Desra, Sekiko Zero or Sekiko O, I don't know. That system does have the administration services, but I don't know why these filters are not working. At least I haven't been able to make them actually function. However, if we do open up the system, we go to the station here, we can see that the offered services at the station does include feed carrier vendor and carrier administration. So the services are definitely available in the system. So once you've got your hands on your fleet carrier, it's time to set it up with the modules that you need. You make sure you're in a system with a carrier administration and you can do one or two things. If you're docked, like I am here, you go into the services and you go to carrier management. Alternatively, if you are not docked at your current at your carrier, you can go in here to the carrier management section here where you will have access to much the same as you do in some of the, uh, of the other interfaces. The first up here is the summary. This is just a brief overview of what's going on with your carrier. The capacity you can see here at the top shows what the, the internal storage in the fleet carrier is being used for. As you fit modules, they take up capacity. And as you fit materials in the, uh, in the hangar, I'll show you all that in a second, that also takes up capacity. So this is equivalent, even though it says units, it is storage just as you have on your ship. So this one can hold what is equivalent to 25,000 tons of stuff. My marketplace is using a little bit, my installed services are using a little bit, and I have some free space. Now the marketplace is also where you have all your um, materials that you have in storage. This also counts as marketplace usage, even though you might just use it as storage for your own private goods. Then you get a list of the available services that you have installed on your carrier that is currently active. Then you have your carrier's security rating. And then of course you have the carrier administration says not available in the star system because we are out uh, in the middle of nowhere, out close to the mining spot. Next up, we have the navigation panel. This is where you control your jumping and moving the carrier around. You can see here again, your current system. You can see how much storage, how much tritium you have in the, uh, in the tritium uh, reserve and also your current jump capabilities. How far can you currently jump? If you want to fill up your tritium storage, you can see it is right here. And you can see, in fact, yes, I am down to 27%. You can carry more tritium that the, dip, the, the, the tritium depot can hold. It can hold up to 1,000 tons. And as you can see here, if I go over here to my inventory and go into transfer, this is where you control your storage from. And you can see here I have a few low temperature diamonds I've been mining, and I also have some tritium in storage. So I could now take some of this tritium, like so, and then I can click confirm down here. Now I've moved that from the internal storage over to my cargo hold, as you can see here. Oops. And then we can go to the tritium depot and I can now donate this tritium like so. And I now have more fuel on board my carrier. This you cannot do remotely. Obviously you need to be on the carrier in order to transfer it over. And this is one of the very few things that cannot be managed remotely from, uh, from the fleet carrier um, management screen. And similarly, if you want to transfer stuff the other way, I've just took a few uh, few low temperature diamonds out of the hold. Again, you go up to transfer and you then either you scroll back and forth or you go transfer all and then you go down, you click confirm and it's transferred back into the fleet carrier. 
Now, if you want to actually schedule a jump, what you have to do is you have to open the Galaxy map from in here. You can't open the Galaxy map in the usual way. You have to use this menu and click Open Galaxy Map. Once you've done that, you can then select where you want to go. For instance, say I actually need to go back to the bubble now, so I'm going to go and select LP. You can either just select the system here, then it will do a jump directly to the main star if there's room. Otherwise, it's going to put you at some planet or moon where there's room for a fleet carrier. Alternatively, you can open up the system map and you can select the specific body you want to jump to. I'm just going to take the, the same one as where our station is at. And then I'm going to set us carrier destination. And if we now go back here to the navigation, you can now see that we have the landing pad lockdown as well as the estimated departure. And you can also see how much fuel you have now, how much fuel you have after the jump. Now you can, if you want to, go in here and you can then select uh, the system. You can cancel your jump if, uh, if you want to. But keep in mind, you can only do that until the landing pad lockdown happens. After this timer, the lower timer here, the fleet carrier is going to go into lockdown, meaning all landing pads will be lowered into the hangar. They will be sealed shut. Nobody will be allowed to either dock or leave the carrier after this point. Then there is about two and a half minutes-ish, I think, um, until the jump happens. And once you arrive on the other end, the ship will be opened back up and people are once again allowed to leave. After the jump, you will have a five minute cooldown before you can schedule the next jump. And with around 15 minutes of charge up time before the jump happens, that means you have about a 20 minute gap between each window. So if you're cutting it really, really tight, you can do about three jumps per hour with a maximum range of 500 light years. So that's 1500 light years per hour, which is the maximum speed at which you can move a fleet carrier. Next up, we have the budget screen where you show all the finances for your carrier. Keep in mind that you will, with a fleet carrier, have two separate wallets. You will have your own private wallet and you will have your fleet carrier wallet. You can see here, I currently have around four building credits allocated to my fleet carrier. You can see here how much uh, is being allocated now for weekly upkeep and how much is available. There's actually a little bit of, of like a negative amount now because I have allocated more than is actually available. So I could lower the slider and say, I put it down and say, I want to allocate around a billion credits to my upkeep and we can see how much is available. If you put anything into the commodity market or the, the black market, come back to that in a second, then you would also see here how much money has been allocated for that. And as again, just done with the slider. Next up, we have the weekly upkeep down here where you can see how much your upkeep is. This is dependent on the modules you're installing. So as you install more modules, your upkeep will begin to, uh, to increase. You'll have to pay more money every week to keep the fleet carrier flying. If you want to figure out exactly how much your upkeep is going to be, you can go to the commander's toolbox where there's a small tool that allows you to sit and play around with the different services, turning them on or off or suspended. Again, I'm going to come back to suspending services in a second here. And you can then see what your buy price is going to be to actually acquiring those services, what's your weekly upkeep, and again, how much cargo they use out of your 25,000 tons. And then there's a breakdown down here at the bottom, what your total buy price for your character will, character will be how much remaining cargo you will have available, weekly upkeep, monthly upkeep, and yearly upkeep is all listed over here on the commander's toolbox. You also part of your weekly upkeep, you do have hull maintenance. That is jumps you do. So every week you get a additional upkeep that is 100,000 credits per jump that you take. You can see so far this week I've done four jumps. So I have 400,000 credits of additional upkeep I need to pay this week. And finally, you have your service tariff. This is basically your cut of any service that people use on board the fleet carrier. So whenever people refuel, repair their ship, buy limpets, or buy ships and modules from you, if that's what, uh, what you want to do, then you can add an additional tax, meaning they're going to pay more than they're used to on other stations, and whatever they pay extra goes into your wallet. And you can go anywhere from zero to a 100% service tariff. And all the way at the bottom here, you can now either deposit or withdraw money from the fleet carrier. And a nice little addition is you can now also go ahead and just simply uh, type in. So if you want to uh, to deposit a billion credits, I would do it like so. And I could then click confirm and a billion credits will be taken out of my personal wallet and put into the fleet carrier wallet. I'm just gonna jump over the commodity market and go to services. We're gonna come back to the commodity market in a bit. Here you can see all the services that you can install and that you currently have installed on your fleet carrier the bridge crew, the commodity trading, the normal like market, as well as the tritium depot, they all come as standard and they don't add any additional upkeeps and you get them for free with the fleet carrier. Well, for free, you paid 5 billion for it. 
all of those are just there and they are included in the 5 million co-op keep. What is not part of the co-op keep is stuff like refuel, which again allows you and guests to refuel. If you do not have this installed, you cannot refuel your ship at the fleet carrier. The same with repairs. If you want to repair your ship, you need that as well. And the armory, which allows you to restock not just ammo, but if we actually go in here to the, uh, to the advanced maintenance, you can see here you also get access to um, to like restock SRVs and fighters and limpets and, and that kind of stuff. So it does add quite a bit of, uh, of services to the fleet carrier. The redemption office is basically like a interstellar factor where you can go and you can hand in um, bounty vouchers. So again, if you want to, uh, to have that service available, you can go ahead and you can buy that. You can see I haven't and here you can see the prices, but again, all those prices, you can also just see them by going to the commander's toolbox. The shipyard and the outfittings is a little interesting because for the owner, the shipyard is available and outfitting and module storage is available for the owner as default. However, if you want to extend this service to the guests on your fleet carrier, so if you want visitors to be able to store their ships, store modules, change ships on board the, the fleet carrier, then you need those two services enabled. They are very expensive. They do have a high upkeep. The security warehouse is the black market, so it works much similar to the uh, to the commodity trading. Only this is for illegal or uh, or that kind of like illegal or stolen goods. And universal cartography should also be pretty self-explanatory if you want to sell expiration data. Now you might have noticed as we clicked in here, there was both an an active upkeep and a suspended upkeep, and that's because you can suspend services if you don't need them. So for instance, let's say I don't want to be able to refuel. I could go here and I could click suspend service. That service is now suspended, meaning if I go out here, you can see this one down here, refuel service suspended. I cannot refuel my carrier any longer until of course I go in and I re-enable um, the suspended service. A suspended service use a smaller upkeep, so it's a way to save money. And as you can see here, you can do this even outside a administration system. You can do this from anywhere. So even if you are thousands of light years out in the black, you can suspend services. Okay, let's head into the commodity market. Here you can set up buy and sell orders on your fleet carriers for all kinds of different materials. If we go in here, you can see we get a list of all the different materials that are available in the commodity market. We could be, for instance, that I wanted to go and trade low temperature diamonds. I could then click here and I could say whether I wanted to buy or sell this material. Let's say I want to buy. I could now say sit here and scroll up till how much I want. And you can see here how my capacity is also increasing or yeah, yeah, the, the amount of capacity that I'm using um, is increasing as I'm allocating because that space will be pre-allocated and you will not have access to that space as long as that buy order is up. Also, you can set up the buy price. However, there is a cap of 1000%. And since the galactic average for low temperature diamonds is around 57,000 credits, that means you're never going to be able to offer more than 570,000 credits, which is about half the price of in the bubble, at least as it is right now. I hope that's a thing that will change in the future. And again, you can only buy or sell. You can't do both at the same time. So either I could also go and say, and I want to sell some low temperature diamonds I have, and I could then set up the price. And there are similar restrictions in place here where I'm limited to only 10 times the galactic average for my sell price. I'm going to unclick that because I don't want to do any, um, any trading with that right now. I should also say that currently, at least at the time of this recording, there is a bug with commodity market that when you sell stuff to the commodity market, um, whether you're the owner or a visitor, the material still shows up in your hangar, but it shows up as stolen. This is a bug. I'm pretty sure this will be fixed and you can resolve it by simply, often it's enough to just go ahead and close down the, uh, the carrier service window and open it up again. That often resets it. Or alternative, if you really wanted to go away, you can log out to the main menu and back in. That should also remove it from your cargo hold. It's not because the cargo is actually there and you are flooding, running with stolen goods. I believe it's just a graphical bug. Um, at least it seems to be able to, uh, to correct itself after a while. But I hope that's something that will be fixed in the not too distant future. As you can see here, I do not have the black market, but it works pretty much in the same way as the, as the normal market where you just set up for stolen and illegal goods. Next up, we have the sh shipyard and the outfitting. I'm going to do both of these at the same time because they're very similar. If you are in a system with a carry administration, you can stock up on ships. They are at the moment in packages, meaning that you can't just say, I want two of that modules and three of that modules. You cannot buy them in packages that contains a variety of modules in various sizes, 
What are the downsides here is if you run out of stock of a module, well, there's not much you can do. You have to head to, a, to an administration service system in order to restock. So if you're planning to offer um, ships and modules in, uh, in deep space out in the black, do keep in mind that you will eventually run out and you will have to make trips back to the bubble to restock on all your modules. Next up, we have the livery. It's, again, pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory, it's much like the other ones. As you can see right now, there's a bug, even though I do have a paint job on my fleet carrier. It, for some reason, it doesn't show until I just go in here and reselect it. There we go. Now a paint job is applied. I hope that'll fix that. There is a variety of different paint jobs. There's actually a lot of different paint jobs you can get. And these can, of course, be purchased for arcs. Same with thruster colors. You can have the numbers on the landing pad have different colors. And you can change the uh, air traffic controller voice as well in here. You have, of course, nameplates you can put on the side. You can have various designs of those, various icons that you have access to can all be put on the side or decals. And then finally, there's the actual layout of the carrier where you can change the shape of the carrier or the basically like a ship kit. So it looks a little different, it looks a little unique. You can also change that in here if, uh, if you wish to. And this gets us down to the settings menu. Down here, you can basically control various aspects of your carrier. For instance, docking access, do you want it to be everybody can dock on your carrier, squadrons only, friends only, squadron and friends, or no one apart from you, of course, you can always dock at your own carrier, even though you've set this to none. Same here with notorious commanders or people who have notoriety. Are they allowed to dock or not? You can set that in here as well. You can also set the activity if you want to, um, so you can kind of tell other people what is the focus of this carrier. I've set mine to mining, since that's going to be the main purpose of this. And you can also decommission your carrier where you basically sell it for scraps and you will get a, um, a percentage of the original buy price back for, uh, for the carrier. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give a like, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.